Okay, so in this video, I'm going to explain how we're going to use the data that we recorded in the lab to um, do the lab, which is determine the solute concentration of a potato cell. So the whole point of these experiments was not just to weigh potatoes and soak them in different solutions. It was to try and figure out how much, uh, what concentration of solutes are inside of the potato cells. And since we don't have any kind of special probe that we can stick in the potato, we have to measure it that way. We have to measure it um, a slightly different way. So let's have, basically, for, I'm going to use some made up data here and show you what we're going to do with it. You're going to do the same thing with the actual data from the um, virtual lab. So let's say, we'll make a little table here. Let's say that um, here's our weight change. Uh, and let's say that the potato slices that were in the zero moles, the, the pure water, they gained 1.2 grams. They gained 1.2 grams. If the potatoes were in 0 0.3 moles, let's say they gained 0 0.3 grams. I'm just making this up. Uh, and let's say the ones that were in 0 0.5 moles, let's say they lost uh, 1 gram. So this one gained, this one gained, this one lost. Okay, so that's our data. We're going to draw a graph of this data. So to draw the graph, uh, the thing that we put on the um, x-axis is the stuff that we set as experimenters. So actually, I'm going to draw that a little lower. <laughs> um, and in this experiment, we set these concentrations. We said we're going to test 0, 0 0.3, and 0 0.5. So I'm going to put those along my bottom axis here, my x-axis. So if, if, it, if I was doing this for real, I'd be using graph paper and a ruler, but I can't do that. So here's going to be my 0. And here's what everyone is very tempted to do here. 0, 0 0.3, 0 0.5. But this is not correct. Now, what's wrong with this? Well, if we see how we've spaced this out, between 0 and 0 0.3, I'm going up 3. 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. So here's an increase of 3. But from 0.3 to 0.5, I'm only going up 2. 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. But yeah, I've spaced them the same, and that can't be right. I've got th going up here 3.3 with the same space I've got going up 0.2 here. So this is incorrect. So what we have to do is redraw this. I'm going to go 0. 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. So okay. Does it matter that I didn't do 0 0.1 or 0 0.4? No, that's okay. We can still have them on the graph. We're just gonna have data for here and here. And we're also gonna put a, a label and units here. So here you would write. Um, concentration of environment uh, in moles. So, so I'm not going to write that on here because I don't have much space, but you need to put units and a label on this axis. All right, then we're going to have to put our, um, our y-axis. So I'm going to put that down here. Now, we, we're going to be plotting our weight change. Up here, we're going to put change in weight. And the units is going to be grams, all right? And we have a gaining weight, positive grams, and we have losing weight, negative grams. So we have to deal with positive and negative numbers on this graph. Um, and so to do that, we're just going to um, work like this. We're going to go above the line here for positives and below the line here for negatives. So it's easy to graph negative numbers. You just have to go down below to make space for them. So here I'm going to put... Um, plus one gram, and here I'm going to put minus one gram. So this is going to be plus 0.5, and this would be 
minus 0.5. All right, so that's my graph set up. I've got my uh, independent variable here spaced out nicely. I should have label and units. I don't have them, but you should um, when you draw your graph. And here's my change in weight with units. And then I've got my positive numbers and my negative numbers spaced out evenly up and down here. So then I can go ahead and, and graph my data. So when I bathed my potatoes in zero moles, I gained 1.2 grams. That's about here. When I bathed my potatoes in 0.3 grams, in, in 0.3 moles, I gained 0.3 grams. So it's going to be about here. Again, yours is going to be more accurate than mine because you'll have graph paper. And then 0.5, we lost one gram. So it's going to be somewhere here. Okay. So you can see I've got my points plotted on here. I was again drawing a real graph. I'm going to put a title. My title will be how concentration of the environment affects the change in weight of potato cells. Again, I don't have space, but you can put that on your graph. All right. And then these definitely look like they want to be a straight line. So I'm going to, um, if I had a long enough ruler, this is my longest ruler, I don't think it's going to fit. But if you have a nice long ruler or, or a smaller graph than mine, uh, you can create a best fit line through here. So let's say I'm going to kind of eyeball a best fit line. Looks like it's going to go something like that through my points. All right. Okay, so here's my graph, looking pretty good. Uh, but we still haven't answered that question. And the question was, what is the solute concentration inside of the potato cell? Okay, so let's think about it. Um, if I bathe my potato cell in a solution that is less concentrated, so the outside solution is hypotonic, then water is going to enter the potato cell and make it heavier. And that's what's going on here. Water's going into the potato cell. All right. If I bathe my potato cell in a solution that is more concentrated on the outside, then water's going to exit the potato cell. And when water exits the potato cell, the, water, the potato cell is going to get lighter. And that's what happened here. The potato cell lost weight because water went out. But think about what would happen if you bathed your potato in a solution that was isotonic to the potato cells. Remember, iso means the same concentration as. So if the potato cells were a certain concentration and the outside solution was the same concentration as what was inside the potato, overall, there would be no water movement. Water wouldn't move in, water wouldn't move out. The potato cell would not change its weight. It would stay the same. All right, so then let's look on here. Change in weight. Do we have a place here where the change in weight is the same, is zero, there's no change in weight? Here we're gaining, here we're gaining, here we're gaining. Oh, here it's zero change in weight. Here we're losing, losing, losing. So right here, this is zero change in weight. All right, so if we, none of our solutions gave us zero change in weight. This solution gave us a gain. This solution gave us a loss. 0.3 gave us a gain. So we didn't get any solution that was exactly isotonic to the potato. Um, we could have done this experiment differently. We could have set up like 100 different dishes. Instead of just doing three that we did, we did this one, this one, and this one. We could have set up tons of different dishes, all at slightly different concentrations. And we could have left them all for the same amount of time, weighed them all, and if we found the exact dish where there was no change in weight, then we can say the solution on the outside that the potato was bathing in is the same as the concentration inside. But that would have meant slicing up the whole potato, setting up tons of dishes and a big old experiment. But because we have a graph, we can shortcut that. We don't have to do all the work. We just did three dishes. We draw a graph. And then we can say, well, if I would have had a dish that was 3.75 moles, sorry, 0 0.375 moles, like right here, right here, I think it's about 0 
If I had a dish that was 0 0.375, there would have been no weight change, no gain, no loss. So if the potato didn't change weight, what can you say about the potato and the outside solution? They must be isotonic. Water didn't go in, water didn't go out. So if the outside was 0 0.375, what must the inside of the potato be? 0 0.375. And that's how you can use a graph like this to help you predict what concentration would be isotonic your concentration on the outside would be isotonic to the inside because that concentration should give you no weight gain. And that's how you can kind of uh, determine, in, determine what, is in, what, what concentration of solutes is inside the potato cell. All right, so I hope this video helps you with analyzing your data. Um, carry on with the virtual lab.